So. Starting one fifteen. Yeah. Thanks everyone for coming. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, my name is Sri Ram Krishna, or Sri Ram, whichever you like it. I am the community manager for System Seventy Six. Um, I am also. Um, I do. A, I'm one of the core members of the GNOME project as well. So. I, I kind of play both sides. Uh, I've been part of open source or free software for 20 years, uh, starting with uh, joining the GNOME project in 1997. So I've been kicking around the desktop space for, for that long. Um, so, and uh, our, interestingly enough, the first talk I ever gave uh, was at Linux Coast Northwest in 2011. And uh, since then, I've been doing a lot of presentations and public speaking. So, kind of credit this conference for starting my career as a, as a, um, as someone who's an ambassador. So, this talk is Pop OS: Visionary Tale of an OS That Will. So, I want to first start with our Pop story. Um, how did we? Start doing this. Why are we doing? Why are we doing this? All of that, and I, I think it's important to note that our modern society has has become a how we are as a modern society is really because of the computer and the operating system. Um, we have used that to create great engineering feats, um, and because you know th they're powerful and versatile tool. And System76 as an OEM has always interacted with those kind of people, people who use their computers as tools. And when we came about working and creating Pop! OS, the people we talked to or interact with through our customer support or out about in conferences, um, we built them for people a lot like you, right? Software developers, makers, computer scientists, those kind of people. And um, you guys use the operating system to create great things. And we wanted to create an operating system that reflected exactly that kind of thing. So a little history. So for most of our time as uh, System76, uh, we were at OEM. We focused primarily on our hardware, right? We wanted to build computers that worked with Linux. That was our niche market. That was something we wanted, we were experts in. Now, we ran Ubuntu for most of that time. Uh, we took all, we, we used their desktop software. Uh, they started off with GNOME and then moved to Unity and so forth. So all that time, that's what we did. We, we took that software, we presented it, we provided support for Unity. Uh, and, and then a, a huge major event happened on, an, a, on April 5th last year. And that's when Mark Shuttleworth posted on, his, on the uh, Ubuntu Insights blog that Unity was canceled. So it, during this whole time, that created a lot of unknowns, right? Because during that whole period, we were doing product development around Unity. We had all these ideas, we had projects. You know, we were trying to do, as a com company, we wanted to do value add, right? So when Unity got canceled, it sort of felt like the rug was pulled underneath us. So, yes? Uh, can you? I mean, Unity is a, presumably is an open source project, right? Yeah. So, when somebody announces that he that he's canceled it, it all means is that he's, he's going he's not going to develop it anymore, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. But so when the prime moving force goes away, it's a little concerning. Right. The, who's who's taking maintaining the bug? Since there's no plan going forward, who's doing maintenance? Uh, that for an OEM who's got customer support paying customers, that's a bit of a problem, right? Because we rely on upstream to do a lot of the uh, maintenance. I mean, that's the power of open source, is that we are socializing the cost of engineering 
our, our, amongst the community. Now, if there's unknowns, like what community is taking over, right? When GNOME 2 was abandoned and moved, we went to GNOME, GNOME Project went to GNOME 3, we didn't know there was Mate that was gonna come, right? So with those unknowns, we have to, you know, we have to figure out, well, what are we gonna do at this point? So, you know, it turns out that <coughs> with anything that happens, there's always a um, opportunity, right? Uh, given that we have an incredible amount of exposure to people who use Linux on our laptops and desktops and servers, uh, it makes sense that we might do something. Because, you know, if you think about it, we were outsourcing all that computer interactions, right? We know, we've been interacting with our customers this whole time, but we're not creating a feedback mechanism uh, with upstream or anything else, right? So we're, what do we do with all this data? And when you think, when, so the data we were collecting from our customer, people like Emma back here, you know, she's all part of the customer support. We have James also at our booth. All these people are our front lines, gathering, understanding the data, answering the questions that customers come up with. So the, the kind of things, so when you're formulating Pop! OS, and you're trying, you, you have an opportunity to address the kind of concerns that customers have. Um, you know, some of the things we, we've had, uh, people would talk to us about was, how do you improve the setup time? Uh, um, when, when you get a computer, you want to set things, you want to do it, you want something to be able to set up very quickly. Uh, we always have questions on drivers uh, or firmware, right? It, when you're getting a laptop from a Dell or a Lenovo, there's always the software that you have on your desktop that says, here, hey, this will update your firmware. Here's update your BIOS, all of that. Those are kind of things kind of support we're looking for as well. So we want to integrate that kind of experience. Um, app centers are something that a lot of desktop projects are working on as well. Uh, and we're no different. We want to create a app center that has you know, something that's pleasant to use and, and works well. Uh, a lot of people think about a lot. Of, a lot of operating systems are for general purpose. Uh, while we are more, you know, more focused on the people we interact with, they include a lot of software that we may not nece necessarily want. I mean, do you need three, four music players that's included? Maybe not. Um, and that kind of leads into um, an OS that's runs fast because you don't have as much load. And then finally, because we're using GNOME, we want a good uh, workflow that's efficient. Uh, we, upstream GNOME really is a keyboard-oriented uh, um, uh, user experience. And I mean, maybe some of you know how to use GNOME or, or whatnot, but this is something that makes sense. And a lot, it's the default in a lot of uh, uh, distros. Now, I, I don't want people to think that we're building this just for our hardware. Uh, I think it's important to know that that Papa was a community project. It's an open source project, and we want to be able to s spread. Uh, Pop OS far and wide as possible, just like any other distro. Um, and so, getting that extra, getting it spread far and wide is great because we want to have good testing. We want to have good QA. We want people to file bugs. Uh, as a community project, we're only going to get, the only way Pop OS becomes a great OS if we have wide number of testing. And um, the more we do that, the more popular it gets, the better the OS gets. And that feedback can be used uh, just to make, make, make the project better.
So we released Pop! OS 1710 in October. And just like Ubuntu and the GNOME project, we do a six month development cycle. And so after six months, we released 1804. Uh, actually, we just released that yesterday. So, <laughs> uh, so and that's, that's, that was, I mean, it's been six months of hard work. And initially we started off with, you know, a theme, you know, something simple. But as we go forward, we we're, we want to be more aggressive about what kind of things we want to build into it. So plotting out our own future. So we should ask, well, what's different? What's, what's different between the previous incarnation and where, how do we differentiate ourselves from the other other distros are out there. And so, so we've done a couple things, more than a couple things. Um, the first one is heightened security. Uh, so our, we, had, we actually created a new installer uh, that supports full disk encryption. So if you're, especially if you get a buy one of our laptops, you can you, you'll get you'll get a machine that's fully available for full disk encryption, so uh, nobody can snoop on your machine or your drive. Um, we also have we don't collect any data. Um, in fact, it's one of our core principles that we don't collect anything on any on anybody. Uh, which is this is true for us. It's true for the GNOME project. Uh, it's really a privacy, uh, especially in this day day and age where we're, we're seeing a lot of examples of, of, of our privacy uh, being violated. Um, we have, like any, if you're on a system 76 laptop, we get out of firmware updates, so you're always up to date. Your, your hardware always gets supported. Um, the next is performance management. Uh, so, I have this thing where it says more accurate battery indication. So it's a really funny thing. Um, if you're on GNOME and you're looking at your battery life, and it says the visual cue on it shows 50%, looks like 50%, but you actually have 4%. It doesn't actually dynamically change the icon as it goes down. So you may visually look at your battery icon and go, oh, I got plenty of time, and then why is it shutting down? And so, so that's one of the things we fixed is, is trying to get a more uh, better indication of how, uh, how much power you have left. Uh, the next one is power profile toggle. Uh, what that means is that uh, we introduced this idea of, of um, and it's not a new idea, of course, it's a, a battery profile. So, you know, if you're connected to, ba uh, to power, you have, you know, you have full performance, whatever, right? If you are out and about, you're on an airplane, then you might uh, want uh, a profile that's a little bit more conservative. Uh, so uh, that kind of thing. Uh, if you're, I don't know, stuff like that. Um, then finally, uh, we have, uh, well, not finally, one more. We have one more slide on that. But uh, the USB flashing utility. So we call this Popsicle, and it's, and it's really helpful for us. Like, so when we're coming here for a conference and we want to have 100 USB sticks with uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, ISO on it, uh, that's kind of hard to do, right, if you have, if you can't do it in parallel. So we came, created this utility called Popsicle that if you, so our, with us we have a, a kind of a USB connector with five, like 15 of them. But on your own laptop, you can put three of them all at once and then flash them all at once. So most laptops have either two to four USB ports. So you could do four at a time. So if you're one of those people who like going to Linux and Stallfests and want to distribute USBs with you know, whatever you want, then this is a great way to, to do that. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so I, I'm, you can 
point this up, but I want to I want to back up and ask you, you know, what System seventy six? What's different about the computer? About the hardware? Well, it's sort of outside the the. Scope the, of scope of this talk, right? Because so I don't, I don't want to focus on. <laughs> I don't want this turning into a System Seventy Six commercial. I, I want to talk about Pop OS, right? So that's. So I rather I rather not. I mean, we can talk after after this if you want to do that. I, I, but I don't I don't want to focus too much on our, our machines. Um, okay. So. Can I uh, ask you which uh, kernel you said you just released? 18.04. Yeah. Which kernel is that with? Uh, it's a Linux kernel, right? Yeah, it's a Linux kernel. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's a Linux distro. So, yeah, uh, I don't know which version offhand. So, okay. I, but I can find that out. That's I, you name dash R for me. <laughs> yes. Did you follow Ubuntu with Ubuntu 4.15? 4.15. 4 yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, we do follow Ubuntu. So it's it's a it's a, a lightweight. Uh, it's basically Ubuntu with a lot of packages removed, yeah. which uh, so. Um, so a uh, couple other things. One of the things we, as an yes. Just uh, quickly about Popsicle. Is that available through your PPA or uh, how else? Uh, it it's uh, well. If, I know it's available on, through Pop OS, but. Um, GitHub, it's yeah. There's a GitHub page for that too. Okay. So, so you could you can compile it yourself. It I can't say for sure, but I'll find out if if it's on a PPA. Okay. Great. Um, but anyway, the great thing about Popsicle is people spend thousands of dollars on USB writers to to do that, and this is a way easier way to to, to do it. Uh, so the other cool thing is uh, the restore. So one of the things that I think is fairly unique, uh, at least from my experience, is the fact that uh, there's no way to reset. So let's say something happens on your computer and maybe you messed up something in Etsy, whatnot, and you want to be able to uh, somehow do a reset. So we have a, actually a restore partition so you could actually go back to defaults uh, if you wanted to. So you don't have to like get a recovery uh, USB stick or something, and because it's already included as a partition inside inside uh, in the hard drive. So you can just do a reinstall quickly uh, and get get back to it. Of course, you should probably uh, do a backup of your data before you're doing that, but it's definitely possible to do a reset. Uh, so that's, that's one other thing we've added. Uh, I mentioned before about a new installer experience, uh, which uh, one of the features was, um, was full disk encryption. Uh, but we did a lot of UX work with it, we, with our designer and uh, graphics artist. And so w the other thing is it's also really fast. So the back end is actually written in Rust. Uh, and we were able to install Pop! OS in about, uh, I think, I want to say uh, less than a minute. So it was, it was pretty fast. So, um, so really fast, really great artwork, that kind of thing. I have some screenshots, and I'm happy to show it off at some point later if you come to our booth. Um, some of the other things we had was uh, the do not disturb switch. So GNOME's UX is always, uh, if you think about it, is about distraction-free computing. So if you're, if you're like giving a presentation right now, and if you ever, if you ever, if you've been in a corporation, and I worked for Intel for 20, 20 years, and every time they give these presentations, there's always a mail that keeps popping up. I'm like, I don't want to see your mail. <laughs> but but it, every time, and like, I'm completely distracted because somebody is doing I am or something like that. So we incorporated a do not disturb switch that basically says no notifications <laughs> during this time, which ironically I did not put in here. Yes? So to go back um, to one of the previous points, I know you, you guys do um, full disk encryption by default, right? 
Yeah. Um, so were there any sort of challenges getting that to work correctly, or did it flawless? Or uh, <coughs> part of, I'm, Part of the reason I'm having trouble answering this question is, is I'm slightly disconnected from everything they went through through the uh, while putting that feature. Um, but um, I think the challenge, one of the challenges was how do you how do you ship a computer with full disk encryption <laughs> when you hold the key, right? If I if we encrypt it, then it's not it, we hold part of it. Um, so the idea is how do you you send somebody a computer, then they need to do a reinstall, essentially. And that's where that reserve partition comes in, is they can do a full disk uh, install, and then you have all the keys, right? Going back to the privacy and everything else, we don't want to hold any of your keys. It generates a genuine key for you. Okay. So then so, the install file. Right, so then that's just like encrypted LVM? Yeah. Yeah, you're using LVM. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then um, for the other stuff, I, I'm assuming you guys are We we try to upstream as much as possible. Um, you know, one of my roles is because I also play upstream, that I try to help get things upstream uh, with GNOME and all that. So, uh, going forward, there's going to be a lot more participation by System76 with, with with the upstream. So, it's not something we've done traditionally in the past. So, this is something new for us. Yeah. And with things like with like popsicle, I think that would be good. Oh yeah, we would love to see that in every distro. Yeah, that would, Popsicle is a pretty wonderful tool. Which, so, yeah. so to clarify, when, when a person actually gets a System76 laptop, the system will uh, first boot and actually boot into the recovery partition to actually install. It will boot system. into an installer, and then you would you would install okay. it straight. Yeah. Unlike the normal the normal one. That's right. Installed. So yeah, it, you would go into a proper install. So, okay. So it, it would be put into a new installer, but new. New installer or experience mode, and then, so. so. Also, we have flash drives for the iPhones, so we want you to know if you guys want to take one of these. Yeah. So you can definitely try it out. Yeah, and we've been using Popsicle too. <laughs> Burned them all, right? So, uh, all right. So going back to my other slide. Uh, so it was talking talk about the installer experience. One of the great things I really liked about the installer is that. Um, a lot of the other distros, like, you know, there's always this dichotomy, right, where if you look at Fedora, uh, you know, Fedora is the community version uh, for that Red Hat uses, right? It's a community project, just like we're doing it. But since they wrap in other models, uh, it's not always a pure desktop experience. Since everything we do is about the desktop, that, that's all we care about, I mean, for us, right? It, Going back to that slide about uh, off, uh, you know, outsourcing our desktop experience, I mean, this is, you're like, why not? This is all we do. This is, this is th everything we're doing, we're selling a desktop. Uh, so, uh, but the fact is, we use the design patterns that's consistent. So, if, if you go through Fedora or somebody else, they have to rope in other other things like servers or things like that. We don't worry about servers. So that means when we're putting together an, an installer experience, it's something specifically for desktop. So. Oh, yeah, please, sorry. Yeah, so um, with the installer, I, I don't know, you guys, did you guys completely write it from scratch? We, the back end is completely from scratch, okay. yeah. Uh, was there a reason for doing that over doing something like a, like a, you know, like an install, like a, Calamari's comes to mind with that sort of thing, but like an installer framework almost. Like, is there a reason you guys wrote from scratch? Is there just some uh, needs that were not being met? I'm just curious. Uh, I, we, we went and evaluated, and there's always some, something that, you know, doesn't quite match up what, what our requirements was. Um, a lot of times it could be down to we don't know the language, right? So let's say, you know, we don't know C++, right? Uh, in our experience. C++? Yeah. So uh, sometimes it's it's a disconnect with cultural things like that. I mean, why, I mean, I don't want to go into a general why do we fork or do something like that, but uh, there's always, there's a, there's a reason for everything we do.
by how you serve the um, startup, um, it will track your, your setup. So portable for existing and for customer. Yes. And we submitted the fix for that. So we do had it for a while, and then for some reason it it stopped working. <laughs> Yeah, so there's always the fact that, that when you have paying customers, you want to be able to uh, show that you're responsive and being able to uh, uh, fix problems as they show up. So, does the young man have a question? <laughs> so, uh, so, but yeah, so the styling and everything, it's, everything is important because you want to have a unified experience all the way, th all the way through. Um, uh, we have we have support for high TPI, low TPI switching. Uh, so there's a daemon that runs, uh, and it sort of sets your resolution properly. So if you ever had, um, you have a high DPI screen, like so the Galago Pro here has a high DPI screen, Dell, whatever, uh, and um, so one of the things if you're using applications that uses GTK2 toolkit, for instance. So if you're using GIMP, it looks really small on a high DPI screen. So the so we try to address that with a, with a daemon that auto sets uh, the resolution so that they actually show up normally. So um, that's something we can demonstrate at the booth, but um, it's a nice way to have a uniform experience regardless of what resolution your, your screen is. So if you've got a high DPI screen, one low DPI monitor, and a high DPI monitor, you know, the, we try to make that experience uniform. So um, now. So this is not only at installation, this is dynamic. Th yeah, this is di dynamic. Yeah. So the, it's, the, the, it's a daemon because it's like a policy daemon, right? It figures out what, what resolutions you set things on and you set that. So. Uh, we have things like curated apps. So as a pop store, we try to figure out what is the best experience, the uh, uh, application that kind of conforms to um, our, our um, suddenly I can't think of the word. <laughs> but uh, you know, we have a set of requirements and they kind of match that. So we, we put curated apps that we think are high quality uh, are, and, um, and responsive and things like that, low quality. Low, no, low number of bugs, that kind of thing. Uh, great design. So, uh, so that's that's one of those. So this is sort of the ins this is the screenshot of the installer <coughs> experience. So we had this great robot <coughs> motif. That's sort of what we do. And what's not showing here is things like things like this is all actually all animated. So you can actually kind of see the the, the thrusters going. Uh, things like that. Uh, so uh, we put we put an incredible amount of visuals. So it's all part of a journey. Uh, when you first get your computer, once you get there, you land and you're ready to get to work, right? It, it's like a, a scientific exploration, right? That's sort of where we're going with. What, what was the nuking over there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually. That's the do not install. Oh, uh, no, could not install. Like, oh, okay. It's all blown up. <laughs> so, uh, actually, I haven't seen that one because I've only, I haven't had a problem with the install at all. So, <laughs> so yeah. I didn't look too closely at that. I should have looked <laughs> um, Again, you know, we're really interested in the feedback. Uh, and so, because it's a community project, you know, getting as much input from all of you is so important to us. Um, we want, you know, we always need people who want who can write documentation. We could be, we we would also, of course, like we have small bugs, uh, things like translation. There's something that's that would be inter interest interesting to us uh, if you speak a foreign language or. Things like that, um, being able to do those translations would be great. And we have a really active chat channel on Mattermost uh, that, um, you know,
come over. We do all our development uh, on Indie Open. So if you if you hang out on our prop channel, you get to kind of just see the stream of consciousness that happens between uh, both community members and uh, Assistant 76. Uh, we've, we've incorporated things like uh, other people's GNOME extensions they've written. Uh, you know, so your contributions are looked at seriously, and if they make sense, we incorporate them. So uh, really, you know, we're really eager on being able to uh, uh, get that going. So, um, how many people? Uh, how many people are working on Pop OS? Yeah. Uh, in inside, how many paid people? Oh the well, the total company is around what twenty four. We must have like. I want to say? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So various, pe some people are working on uh, the, the installer. We have one person who is completely dedicated to pop working on installers. We have others who work on the visuals. In fact, he's, he's actually at our booth. So if you look up Ian, he's, he's the one who did all the, the theme work. Uh, so, so, you know, we have some of us out there. And he can give you a a lot of the experience. Some of you wanted to know like what challenges you had. He's really good because he's involved with all the decisions that happen. Yes? So um, on the flip side of that, how many community developers do you have working on Pop OS? Uh, it's still relatively new. We actually only <coughs> started doing all our development um, in the open like four weeks ago. But there are at least like five that are active uh, developers that uh, have contributed uh, uh, various parts. So, uh, like I said, the Do Not Disturb was by one person. Um, we didn't do that. Uh, so, and but then, um, so you guys said you use uh, Mattermost and then uh, like GitHub or do you guys use more? We use GitHub for for the code repository. Uh, so um, we have we have cards that kind of we'll pass happy to pass out if people are interested. Uh, getting involved, and uh, and of course we have pop pop USB stuff. So. Um, I think that's the end of my slides. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is there going to be a pop quiz at the end of this? <laughs> <laughs> Good. No, no. I I, I wouldn't want to stress you guys out with a pop <laughs> quiz. Pop on pop. <laughs> so do you give a prize for the first for the first? New joke, first the first incarnation of a joke on the world. Oh, I, well, that might be a, a, a good idea in if going in the future. I hadn't thought about prizes, but yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, I didn't. I usually, yeah, I didn't. I didn't bring the. I didn't bring, think about prizes, but <laughs> but we have a barbecue. You should come over and hang out with us. <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah. So, to follow up on the whole installer thing, yeah. um, do, you, do you have a name for that installer? Uh, distant Inst. D I S T I N S T. And you said that the back end was entirely from scratch, but the front end is too, right? The front end uh, is in cooperation with Elementary. So, um, so we took their installer, but we added two panes. So, the, you know, it was a single pane, but in conjunction with them, we, we have a two pane system. That's where, if you go back, you, you see, like, we have a visual here and then uh, the information on this side. So, uh, so. Th 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 the two panes are right there, right? Yeah. yeah. So, this sort of, you know, again, it's always trying to find a nice visual. And of course, the, the, once you go through an installer, then there's going to have initial setup, and then we do further stuff there. So that's, that's like maybe a great place to work with the GNOME project on. You can also, if you want to come by our booth, um, we can demo the popsicle for you. We have a little blaster that holds 12 jars, so if you want to see that and talk about it, yeah. you said you're a pretty small development team, like seven people working on the operating system. What challenges have you had with such a small team developing the whole operating system or you know, building Pop OS and how have you addressed those? Okay. Um, I think I think a lot of our challenges is 
really trying to get our rec like that's a hard question for me again I'm disconnected from all the engineering stuff as, as well but um, So I, w I will say QA is a challenge for us. I mean, because you know we have our machines, but we don't have a full test thing for everything. So trying to figure out um, where all the bugs are and find the corner cases, uh, those are those are things that we have uh, that are challenging for us. Uh, since we don't have all the hardware, I mean, this this is sort of even true for other uh, other pla other projects. Sure. I'm sure, right? So uh, the, the QA process is something that's uh, always going to be challenging because we, we, know, we know how to hack things, right? Yeah. But, but testing is always a problem. Do you have a pretty good feel of what customers do with your laptops? I mean, exactly specifically what they do? Oh, yeah. Uh, Emma and James are on the front line. So they, they get all the calls and they work out. So we have, we have a pretty wide group of people. Yes? Do you have a strategy or a roadmap of how to get more community into the operating system? More community interaction? Uh, we have a strategy, yes. Uh, we, we usually have, so there's, there's, there's two parts, right? So you have meet space, which is essentially going to conferences, uh, Going, giving talks, uh, also um, figuring out ways to start conversations, right? So we're always attracted by conversations we can have but when, when you're talking about a project, like what are the interesting things we're doing? Uh, so, so we have that, we're also look, we're working closely with the local community. Uh, so Denver has a pretty strong DevOps, uh, you know, the DevOps and startups, things like that. So so you have this sort of meet space and digital space. Digital space, of course, is trying to drive as many people uh, to our ch a chat channel, uh, writing great documentation, and people basically uh, lowering the bar of entry as much as possible. So uh, this is especially great when, uh, this is where we want people on the chat channel, because that's where we get to, we hear pain points, things like that. And, I answered that question. <laughs> I have a whole document. <laughs> I'll do a lot more than what you said. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm not familiar with your current company, and I'm just trying to figure out what the differentiation is. Is just very well supported. Very hardware that's very well supported with your particular. Right. It's so it's uh, it's basically we we curate our hardware. So. Select the components that work best on Linux. So you put them all together as a single product. Now, when the, the differentiator, I would say, uh, is when you when all of us go out and look for a laptop, we have to make sure that it works with Linux, right? So I'm sure every one of you have ran into something where some hardware doesn't quite work, and next thing you know, you're compiling kernel modules from the latest sources to get things going. <laughs> we don't want that, right? So when, the idea here is to buy a laptop and it just works. And if, if, if there's a problem, you have someone to call, right? So that's, that's really the difference. <laughs> you call her, you talk to her, and we work it out. Uh, and so that's, that's really the big differentiator. And, and, and in this case, we're, you know, we've been pretty successful at it, right? Uh, we started off very small for 12 years. We still exist and we're still growing. So uh, you know, it's it is a successful business model, and this niche is is growing. So more and more people are interested in Linux pre-built with Linux uh, machines pre-built with Linux. Yeah. I, I have an uh, interesting question uh, as it relates to 
you curating a open source project within a commercial organization, that being that you're going to have people that don't have your commercial product using your open source product and wanting to find support for it. So how are you going to deal with we're support for those situations? We're directly into um, Matterverse for community support. We have, um, I think, three of the members of the Popsy team are like producing like, code <coughs> and building for that channel. Um, and then there's PopDoc. We have we separated our pop documentation from our 1576 pop documentation. So um, there's plenty of documentation for all the members of our team. And we also have a Reddit. So there's Reddit, R, Pop OS, and R, R System 76. So, but, yeah. Yeah? Any possibility to try to get a discourse form set up? I'm sorry? Getting a discourse form set up? Oh, a discourse? Uh, I haven't, we haven't really thought about it. I mean, uh, I haven't used discourse at all, so. Open no. to anything. Yeah. yeah. You don't if, want to be open to anything. <laughs> <laughs> And you'll get distracted by positive. You know, oh, I want a YouTube channel, and I want to talk to you. You know, this and that, the other. All right. Yes, in the back. Thoughts on all about the recovery partition, and if not, any details? On the recovery partition, all I know about it is there's a separate partition that stores the the base OS. And then um, they have all the keys. No, there's no keys. The keys gets generated during the install. So when you do a reinstall, you supply the key at that point. So you select full disk encryption from the installer, and then it generates the keys, and then uh, installs on on the partition you want. So you can't if you have if you have some of your uh, disk and one partition and the and the operating system in the other partition, and you decide you want to reinstall just the operating system. You you lose your uh, your key for the for the data for your old data. Uh, let's see. Let me explain Lux for me that way. It's um, there there is some magic they do with XOR that I don't. You don't you don't lose it. There's um. I wish Christian was here. He, we had this conversation on the way t on the way up here about specifically how those keys are generated. But because, for instance, if you have other uh, users uh, and they want to change them, then they it's a full, still a full disk per, uh, encryption. They find a way. So if somebody else changes their encryption, um, they it's. All the others don't have to change their password at the same time because they would lose their keys. So there's something in Lux that does that. I'm not fully aware of it. I, I don't use it. So, but I do. I do believe that there, it's supported but it, through Lux. So. Okay, and, and I don't know what Lux is. That's a key. Lux is the encryption software that does full disk encryption. Oh, okay. you can. My understanding is if it's a private passphrase, that's used with the volume key that's created per volume. Mm -hmm. So if you're reinstalling just the operating system, it's going to use the same passphrase that you're going to end up creating your volume key. So if you're using the same passphrase in your data, mm -hmm. it's not creating any volume key for that. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, let me hear and continue. Yeah. So other than sharing well with, with your hardware, what, do you, what would you say the biggest difference is between, uh, like you said, uh, partner with, Yeah, well, it, yeah. If you come to a booth, you can you can definitely play around with it. Uh, I, so the I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure. I understand the question. Just a short question: What's the difference between Pop OS and Elementary OS? Oh, uh, they're completely different in terms of design patterns and everything else. So, you know, we're sort of following more GNOME in, in this case, but the because we have a close associate with them, yeah. so s pieces that we use versus Pop Shop comes. Is, is from elementary uh, and, and installer. I, I, it's because we have a good rapport with them 
and they had designers, so we work well together. That's, that's essentially, there's not a person. They have a target and market, and so the sort of age. So ours so is very specific to the scientists and things like that. Are you, is your target market more developers and thinkers? Yes, exactly, yes. Uh, basically, scientists, as, as Emma was talking about, uh, elementary is more general purpose. Uh, so it's more, sorry, more what? General purpose. So, yeah, they, 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 have a, they have a different purpose for some reason. So, yeah. So, you said at what, did you say at what point you got installed time to download a minute and a half, I guess? I'm, just, I'm trying, I'm, I don't remember the exact, I'm, I remember it's under a minute, but. Um, I, I, I don't think it's well, under a minute. I actually, I think I'm wrong. Um, and I'll have, not have to go and time myself and take a look at it again. But I think it was 70 minutes. I think it was like 70 seconds. Sorry, not 70 oh. minutes. Uh, something like that. <laughs> come, come back to me. I'll tell you the real number. And I'll, I'll do it on Twitter, too. <laughs> so... But it is fast compared to uh, like ubiquity, at least when we compare it. So, yeah. so. No. Any other questions? I think we're almost out of time here. So. All right, great. Thanks. And if you guys more have questions, stop by our booth. Um, <laughs>